Welcome to 247 Music. Today, I'm going to rank one of Kendrick Lamar's most critically acclaimed albums of all time. Damn. This is one of my favorite albums of all time, and I can say that this album has consistently been in my rotation throughout the years. So let's get into it. Starting off the list at number 14, I have God. This what God feel like. This song is basically about how Kendrick is choosing to live his life in fear of God and chasing salvation. He also feels all-powerful and compares the lifestyle that he has now to that of God. This is a mid-track in my opinion. His vocal inflections sound off and very forced. I also don't like the chorus. The production is smooth and Kendrick's flow is decent. Also, Kendrick comparing the cessation that he feels from his successes so what God must feel is a creative move. But I still think that it lacks the depth that other songs on this album have. At number 13, I have Love. Believe it or not, even though I have it so low, I actually do like this song. Love or Lust is a big theme in the album. But I do think that both of these tracks are towards the bottom of the record. It's catchy and it has a great feature from Zachary. It brings a more melodic vibe to the album. The production is good. I would describe the production as lush and dreamy, which perfectly matches the theme of love. Lyrically, I found that this is less complex than most of the other tracks, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, I do think that the writing in the verses could have been better. So overall, this is a decent song with a good message. Coming in at number 12 is Lust. The production here is interesting and to me the best part about the song. The beat is hypnotic and it has almost an eerie tone that reflects the repetitive nature of the song's theme. This is the evil counterpart of Love, so the theming was well done. Kendrick talks about his cycle of lust and the struggle of breaking out of the cycle that he draws from his own experiences, so this is one of his more introspective tracks, which I like. But I was just never too thrilled about Kendrick's performance on this song, and in comparison to the songs that I have above it, I think that it's rightfully at place number 12. At number 11 is Element. I want to say that this track is a banger. It has a hard-hitting production, and Kendrick has an amazing, aggressive delivery. The theme of the song is basically It seems as if Kendrick is wrestling with the fact that we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. Regardless, we end up damned. It's raw and powerful, but it feels more straightforward compared to some of the other tracks on this album. I love this song. And it was actually the first song of this album that I gravitated towards. But I think that 11 is a fitting place for it. Now hitting the top 10, we have Loyalty, featuring Rihanna. The chemistry between Kendrick and Rihanna is undeniable, and the production is amazing. The song speaks on trust and loyalty in relationships. More specifically, and Kendrick's own life, and how he can only move forward with people who are loyal within his own circle. It's a great track, and the music video tells you so much about what Kendrick meant when he said certain lines. I love this song, and it hurts to put it this low, but I genuinely think that the nine songs that I have above this are better. Humble comes in at number nine. This was one of the big singles off of the album, and for good reason. It has a catchy piano riff, and a booming bass, and Kendrick's flow is great. I feel like this song's message is easy for most to understand, and it's one of the more approachable songs for people that don't listen to them. But it's more of a hype song than an introspective one, and I think that that's its claim to fame. But, before I move on, just shout out to Mike Will for giving this beat to Kendrick and not Gucci Mane. But moving on, Y'all takes the eighth spot for me. From here on out, 
I think that all these songs are amazing to perfect songs. This song has a meditative feel to it, and I love how mellow the production is. In this song, Kendrick reflects on his life and personal struggles. Kendrick also brings up the fact that he is not religious, but he is an Israelite. Better yet, a damned or a cursed Israelite, which is crucial within this album. I feel as if this message was able to shine due to the minimalistic production. It allowed Kendrick's lyrics to take center stage. But moving on to seventh, hear me out on this one. In the seventh spot, I have blood. Hello, ma'am. Can I be of any assistance? This is the album's intro, and it sets the tone and the theme of the album perfectly from the very first line. I've always loved this song. The production is just beautiful. It's cinematic. The vocal reflections that Kendrick uses here create a haunting atmosphere and tie beautifully into the story. I think that the storytelling that you get from Dot here is captivating, and it immediately drew me in from my very first listen. It's a short track, and many are going to put it low because they say it's not really a song. But I just love the messaging of the song and the tone that it sets for the album. So yeah, this is number seven for me. I know it's an unpopular opinion, and I know I'm going to get cooked in the comments for it. I already know. But this is a hill I'm willing to die on. At number six, I have DNA. This track is an absolute powerhouse of a song. It's a radio banger. But at the same time, it is deceptively complex. I love the detail that Kendrick hid within this song. And I like how he mentions 23 things that are within his DNA, which is comparable to human chromosomes. These 23 things are of good and bad nature. And I think that this ties into a lot of the internal problems that Kendrick speaks on within the album. I love Kendrick's rapid fire delivery and the beat switch. Kendrick also has an aggressive delivery after the beat switch, and this is my favorite part of the song. I think DNA is slept on within his catalog, and it offers a lot of value. So six it is. Pride is number five on my list. Hell raising, well chasing, new worldly possessions, flesh making spirit. There was a point in time where this was as high as three. My snowfall lovers know what's good. But I think that five is a great placement for this song. The production on this track is mesmerizing, and it very well might be a top three produced track on this album. Kendrick speaks on the complexities of pride and how it can be the downfall of oneself. The lines that resonate with me the most are, love's going to get you killed, but pride's going to be the death of you. These are actually the first lyrics of the song, and I feel like Kendrick was trying to say that love will make you vulnerable and put you in harm's way, whether physically or emotionally. But pride will not harm you physically, but it will mentally. Pride is one of the seven deadly sins. Hence the lyric, pride is going to be the death of you. Pride is also said to open up the door to a plethora of other sins. So even from the first line, Kendrick had already impressed me. The double and triple entendres were amazing. And I just think it's genius work. And it's crazy that this is only my number five. But moving on to number four, I have XXX. The great American flag is wrapped in drag with explosives, compulsive disorder. The production here is dynamic and ever changing, and it perfectly matches the song's shifting themes. I love the story of Johnny, and as a black man myself, I love that Kendrick addressed issues of the mindset of young black men. The final verse is the best and the deepest, in my opinion. He speaks on the problems within America and touches on the American dream. The collaboration with U2 added a unique touch as well. This is the most dynamic song on the album, and I think that it deserves to be at number four on the list. Now moving into the top three, I have Feel. I feel like a chip on my shoulders. I feel like I'm losing my focus. I feel like I'm losing This track is deeply introspective. And it is basically Kendrick pouring his feelings of isolation, pressure, and self-doubt onto the track. The wordplay within this song is interesting because it revolves around the word feel. It's a beautiful track. And if you've been through some things in life, I'm sure that you relate to it just as much as I do. 
The tonal switch towards the end of the song is amazing. And it shows how these feelings that he has are very deep and real. And I love this. This is easily towards the top of his catalog for me. Taking second, I have Duckworth. Fellowship with demons and relatives, I'm a star. Life is one funny mob. This track is one of the best storytelling tracks that I've ever heard. And the fact that it's true only adds to how good it is. The song is a narrative about Kendrick's father and Top Dog's near fatal encounter from back in the day. From the very first listen, it had me hooked. Kendrick's lyricism and storytelling shines in this song, and he's able to use complex rhymes and vivid imagery throughout the entire track. Coupled with Kendrick's amazing storytelling is one of the best produced beats that I've ever heard. Shout out to Ninth Wonder, who produced this track. It has a mixture of soulful samples and three beat switches which perfectly complements the story's emotional highs and lows. This is no doubt towards the top of the rankings for me. And then number one, I have fear. I will say that a lot of times I switch between having fear and Duckworth at number one. But ultimately, I think that fear takes it. It's the most compelling and emotionally charged track on the album. Kendrick dives deep into his fears at three different stages in his life. One stage being at 7 years old, the next at 17, and then the last being at 27. And these fears are crucial to the theme and the contents of the album. The storytelling here is incredible, and it was crazy hearing the progression of the fear within his life and how it impacted him up to the current day. And personally, I relate to a lot of this song. I wish I could go deeper into the song, but I'll save that for another day. But yeah, fear takes the cake for me. But thank you for watching. If you'd like, you can leave a comment with any suggestions that you may have in regards to future albums that you'd want me to rank. And I'll see you in a future video.